In this short video, I'm going to show you how to build a retrieval augmented generation server so that you can perform RAG systems with Verba. Verba is an entire framework in Python that lets you easily build a server for doing RAG systems. It comes to us from the open source company Weviate, which provides a great vector database. So let's go ahead and figure out what Verba is and how to get started with it. Let's go ahead and get started with Verba. We're going to take a look at the GitHub repository, where you can find all the documentation that you need to really get up and start it running pretty quickly. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to need to install Verba onto your system. I recommend making a clean environment to do this. To install Verba, you're going to use the command pip install golden Verba. Make sure you have the word golden here. To go ahead and get started with Verba, let's go ahead and follow those instructions. We're going to create a new environment and it's going to be called Verba. Go ahead and do this with whatever environment system that you're using. I'm going to go ahead and just use Conda. Now I've already got the environment created and I'm going to go ahead and activate Conda Verba, which is the name of my environment. Once in there, I can go ahead and run pip install golden Verba and it's going to go ahead and install Verba for me. Now for the purposes of this video, I have already gone ahead and installed Verba within this environment. So this is going to pass just fine. Once Verba is installed on in your system, you can start working with it, but you have to do one thing first. You have to have a .env file in the in <clears throat> main directory in which you're going to be working. Here you're going to place a set of API keys. Now this is going to change depending on the source of the API that you're going to be using. For the purposes of this video, we're going to be using OpenAI's API key. This is where you're going to place your own API key for whatever you're doing. Now, to access your own OpenAI API key, you can log into OpenAI and create a new API key. There's plenty of instructions for do doing this on the OpenAI website. And I'm not going to go into that because others might be using Coerce or Hugging Face to do this. Nevertheless, you're going to place it right here. Once done, you also need to have some texts that you want to analyze. I've selected a very small portion from an oral testimony from the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. And our goal in this video is to use domain specific information, specifically about this individual here, to retrieve it using Verba. So now that we've gotten Verba installed, we can go ahead and build our entire Verba system by running the command Verba start. This is going to build up our Verba server that's going to allow us to access it automatically. You'll notice that Verba's gone ahead and created a new file for us over here called verba underscore config.json. This is going to populate with some pretty important data that we're going to see in just a moment, specifically how we read the data, how we chunk the data, how we embed it, how we retrieve it, and most importantly, the whole point of RAG systems, how to actually generate some new data. As you can see here, we're going to be using GPT-4 to do all of our generation, while we're going to be using the ADA embedder to go ahead and embed our data. ADA and GPT-4 both are being populated because we've used the OpenAI API key in our .env file. So let's go ahead now and take a look at what Verba looks like once it's started up. To access your Verba server, you can go to the following address. This is going to be the default, 0.0.0.0, .0 at a port, so column, or colon, 8000. Once you're in the system, you can start to add your documents to it. To add documents, we can use things like the simple reader and go ahead and just import or drag all of our files to right here. Now, I've already gone ahead and imported our ushmm.txt, which you'll have available to you in this repository. Now, the other things that we have here are things that allow us to chunkify our data and embed our data. This is going to be how the data is essentially processed when it's given to the RAG system. Word chunkers tell you different things like units and overlap that identify how many units of words that you have and how much overlap there is between words. Overlap is very important so that context isn't broken apart in an unorganic way. In other words, each chunk of data that you have will have a little bit of overlap and therefore a little bit of overlap in semantic meaning. Likewise, we have sentence chunker, which will chunk your data at each individual sentence. And likewise, you also have the ability to overlap with sentences. And then finally, we have the ADA embedder here. ADA is an ADA model that comes from OpenAI, and this is the model that we're using to go ahead and embed all of our documents. In other words, this is what's going to convert each chunk into its own little vector. Once we have all of our documents populated, we can then begin to work with our data and start to ask questions to it. In order to do this, the RAG system in this case is going to be using GPT-4 by default, but I could easily switch over and use GPT-3. Now that we have all of our data loaded up though, we can go ahead and start asking questions. What if I wanted to ask a question, who 
is Agnes. If I were to pose this very question to GPT or ChatGPT by default, I would get very generic answers back, if anything at all. But what I need to know is something domain specific. In other words, specific to this exact text. So let's go ahead and pose the question, who is Agnes? And over the course of the next few seconds, you'll see a few things occur. The first thing that we see happen are the relevant sections of our text that relate to Agnes. And as we can see, the very first thing that we have is this particular segment here, where we have a question posed, can you tell me your full name, please? And the person speaking, Agnes herself, responding with Agnes Grossman Arano. And we can see a bunch of other documents that include things like where she was born and a little bit about her family. All of this is being given to a GPT-4 model or a generation model that can then take that domain-specific information and generate a generated reply to our very specific question of who is Agnes. And what we see here is a generated reply from GPT-4 that's used that context that we've given it from the RAG system to generate a natural language response. And as we can see here, it doesn't just tell us who she is and where she's born, but it also specifically tells us where she was born and a bit about her nuclear family. All of this information is not stuff that GPT-4 knows, it's stuff that GPT-4 was given from this context window that was provided to it by the RAG system. And this is the real utility of a RAG system. It allows you to take domain-specific information, give it to a GPT model, only from the relevant pieces of it, and that way you can have a small context window that is most likely to give you good answers to a specific domain-specific question. So that's Verba real quickly. If you want to see more videos on Verba and how to do more complex things with it, or how to work with larger collections of data, because it does scale well, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to make more Verba videos in the future.